Bambi, a Walt Disney book based on the original story by Felix Sultan, read by Books for Kids by Flying Dragons. Bambi came into the world in the middle of a forest thicket. The hidden thicket was scarcely big enough for a new baby and his mother, but the magpie soon spied him there. What a beautiful baby, she cried and away she flew to spread the news to the other animals of the forest. Soon, her chattering soon brought dozens of birds and animals to the thicket. The rabbits came hurrying, the squirrels came a-scurrying, the robins and bluebirds fluttered and flew. At last even the old owl woke up from his long day's sleep. Hoo! Hoo! the old owl said sleepily, hearing all the commotion. Wake up, owl, friend owl, a rabbit called. It's happened. The young prince is born. Everyone's going to see him, said the squirrels. You come too. With a sigh, the owl spread his wings and flew off towards the thicket. There he found squirrels and rabbits and birds peering through the bushes at a doe and a little spotted fawn. The fawn was Bambi, the new prince of the forest. Congratulations, said the owl, speaking for all the animals. This is quite an occasion. It isn't often that a prince is born in the forest. The doe looked up. Thank you, she said quietly. Then, with her nose, she gently nudged her sleeping baby until he lifted his head and looked around. She nudged him and licked him reassuringly. At last, he pushed up on his thin legs, trying to stand. Look, he's trying to stand up already, shouted one of the little rabbits, Thumper. He's awfully wobbly though, isn't he? The new fawn's legs were not very steady, it was true. But at last he stood beside his mother. Now all the animals could see the fine white spots on his round bread coat and the sleepy expression on his soft baby face. The forest around him echoed with countless small voices. A soft breeze rustled the leaves about the thicket and the watching animals whispered among themselves. But the little fawn did not listen to any of them. He only knew that his mother's tongue was licking him softly, washing and warming him. He nestled closer to her and closed his sleepy eyes. Quietly, the animals and birds slipped away through the forest. Thumper the rabbit was the last to go. What are you going to name the young prince? he asked. I'll call him Bambi. The mother answered. Bambi, Thumper repeated. Bambi, that's a good name. Goodbye, Bambi. And he hopped away after his sisters. Bambi was not a sleepy baby for long. Soon he was following his mother down the narrow forest paths. Bright flowers winked from beneath the leaves. Prickly branches tickled his legs as he passed. Finally, as Bambi and his mother reached a little clearing in the forest, they met Thumper and his family. Hi, Bambi, said Thumper. Come on and play. Bambi soon understood the game Thumper and his sisters were playing, and he began to jump and run off his stiff, spindly legs. Thumper jumped over a log and his sisters followed. Come on, Bambi, Thumper called. Hop over the log. Bambi jumped, but not far enough. He fell with a plop on top of the log. Too bad, said Thumper. You'll do better next time. Bambi untangled his legs and stood up again, but still did not speak. He pranced along behind Thumper and his brother and sister bunnies. Though he was still a little unsteady on his long legs, Bambi wasn't about to miss any of the fun. As they passed the many different creatures that called the forest home, Thumper and his siblings took great pride in teaching the young prince their names. Bambi met possums who greeted him while hanging upside down. He met a mole who popped up out of the ground to say hello. Bambi soon saw a family of birds sitting on a branch. Those are birds, Bambi, Thumper told him. Birds! Bambi watched the birds sitting on the branch. There were even baby birds in a nest, chattering happily. He thought for a moment, then slowly said, Bird! The young prince had spoken his first word. Thumper and his sisters were all excited, and Bambi himself was pleased. He repeated the word over and over to himself. Then he saw a butterfly cross the path. Bird, bird, he cried again. No, Bambi, 
said Thumper. That's not a bird, that's a butterfly. The butterfly disappeared into a clump of yellow flowers. Bambi bounded towards them happily. Butterfly, he cried. No, Bambi, said Thumper. Not butterfly, flower. Out from the bed of flowers came a small black head with two shining eyes. Flower, said Bambi. The black eyes twinkled. As the little animal stepped out, the white stripe down his furry back glistened in the sun. Thumper the rabbit was laughing so hard that he could scarcely speak. That's not a flower, said Thumper. That's a skunk. Flower, repeated Bambi. I don't care, said the skunk. The young prince can call me a flower if he wants to. I don't mind. Flower. Bambi repeated. So Flower the skunk got his name. One morning, Bambi and his mother walked down a new path. It grew lighter and lighter as they walked along. Soon the trail ended in a tangle of bushes and vines, and Bambi, Bambi could see a great bright open space spread out, spread out before them. Bambi wanted to bound out there to play in the sunshine, but his mother stopped him. Wait, she said. You must never run out on the meadow without making sure it is safe. She took a few slow, careful steps forward. She listened and sniffed in all directions. Then she called, Come. Bambi bounded out. He felt so good and so happy that he leapt into the air again and again, for the meadow was the most beautiful place he had ever seen. His mother dashed forward and showed him how to race and play in tall grass. Bambi ran after her. He felt as if he were flying. Round and round they raced in great circles. At last his mother stopped and stood still, catching her breath. Then Bambi set out by himself to explore the meadow. Soon he spied his little friend the skunk sitting in the shade of some blossoms. Good morning, flower, said Bambi, and he found Thumper and his sisters nibbling sweet clover. Try some, Bambi, said Thumper. So Bambi did. Suddenly a big green frog popped out of the clover patch and hopped over a meadow pond. Bambi had not seen the pond before, so he hurried over for a closer look. As the fawn came near, the frog hopped into the water. Where could he have gone? Bambi wondered, so he bent down to look into the pond. As the ripple cleared, Bambi jumped back, for he saw a fawn in the water, looking out at him. Don't be frightened, Bambi, his mother told him. You were just seeing yourself in the water. So Bambi looked once more. This time he saw two fawns looking back at him. He jumped back again, and as he lifted his head, he saw that it was true. There was another little fawn standing beside him. Hello, she said. Bambi backed away and ran to his mother, where she was quietly eating grass beside, an, beside another doe. Bambi leaned against her and peered out at the other little fawn, who had followed him. Don't be afraid, Bambi, his mother said. This is little Feline, and this is your Aunt Ina. Can't you say hello to them? Hello, Bambi, said the two deer, but Bambi did not say a word. You have been wanting to meet other deer, his mother reminded him. Well, Aunt Ina and Feline are deer like us. Now can't you speak to them? Hello, whispered Bambi in a small, small voice. Come and play, Bambi, said Feline. She leaned forward and licked his face. Bambi dashed away as fast as he could run, and Feline raced up and down the, and after him. They almost flew over the meadow. Up and down they chased each other, over the little hillocks they raced. When they stopped, all topsy-turvy and breathless, they were good friends. Then they walked side by side on the bright meadow, visiting quietly together. One morning, Bambi woke up shivery with cold. Even before he opened his eyes, his nose told him there was something strange and new in the world. Then he looked out of the thicket. Everything was covered with white. It is snow, Bambi, his mother said. Go ahead and walk out. It is all right. Bambi stepped out onto the snow very cautiously. His feet sank deep into the soft blanket. He had to lift them up high as he walked along. 
Now and then, with a soft plop, a tiny snowy heap would tumble from a leaf overhead onto his nose or back. Bambi was delighted. The sun glittered so brightly on the whiteness. The air was so mild and clear. And all around him, white snow stars came twirling down. From the crest of a little hill, he saw Thumper. Thumper was sitting on top of the pond. Come on, Bambi, Thumper shouted. Look, the water's stiff. He thumped one foot against the solid ice. You can even slide on it. Watch! Thumper took a run and slid swiftly across the pond. Bambi tried it too, but his legs shot out from under him and down he crashed on the hard ice. That was not so much fun. Let's play something else, Bambi suggested when he had carefully pulled him up, pulled himself to his feet again. Where's Flower? I think I know, said Thumper. He led Bambi to the doorway of a deep burrow. They peered down into it. There, peacefully sleeping on a bed of withered flowers, lay the little skunk. Wake up, Flower, Bambi called. Is it spring yet? Flower asked day? Sleepy. That's a skunk called Flower. Is it spring yet? Flower asked sleepily, half opening his eyes. No, winter's just beginning, Bambi said. What are you doing? Hibernating, the little skunk replied. Flowers always sleep in the winter, you know. Thumper yawned. Oh, I guess I'll take a nap too, he said. Goodbye, Bambi. I'll see you later. So Bambi was left alone. Sadly, he wandered back to the thicket. Don't fret, Bambi, his mother said. Winter will soon be over. Mm. Winter will soon be over and spring will come again. So Bambi went to sleep beside his mother in the snug, warm thicket and dreamed of the jolly games that he and his friends would play in the wonderful spring to come. The end. If you enjoyed this book, please hit subscribe. We've got plenty more books we'd love to share with you. That's right.